Okay, let's take a look at the brilliance pads in terms of how to um, re-ink them, okay? But I thought I would show you something here first, one of the benefits of having a water-based, water-soluble type of pigment ink is that you can clean off your stamps with just plain water even after the inks have, you know, pretty well dried on the surface here. I'm cleaning off some silver ink off of my stamps here. I don't really clean too thoroughly uh, most of the time. Um, I just leave some residual types of inks from previous impressions, unless I'm just changing um, the hue of something completely. Like, say, if I'm stamped at something in, like, a dark black pigment ink, um, like a Versafine Clair or something like that, and then the next color I'm going to stamp it out in is going to be something like light blue or something like that, okay? Uh, you're saying, well, when would you do that? Well, if I want something to look like it's really far off in the distance uh, and it's going to be um, kind of a depiction of like a, a light, you know, kind of foggy morning or something like that, then instead of stamping in high contrast, really dark black, you stamp it in in something very light and then you do it kind of within the um, color scheme um, that you're going to be utilizing in your piece. So, um, let's see right here. I don't know if I used uh, the brilliance on this one right here, but uh, see, all that comes off really good. I haven't used this one in, I don't know, in, I don't remember when. It might be a, a week or two. I don't know. It seems like if I don't use something, it seems like it's a month or something like that. But anyways, that cleans up. I'm just cleaning off with a paper towel here, so... Um, you know, easy enough. I mean, you can be more thorough about it, but the bottom line is what I'm getting at here is that they're water-based and easy to clean up. Okay, so let's go to some Brilliance pads here. Okay, now I have three different colors because I this is the same line of inks, okay? But I don't know if it's in my imagination, but I don't find the consistency of the different colors to be the same. Now, I don't know, I mean, maybe this real kind of metallic galaxy gold would be sil uh, similar to this starlight silver, or something like that, being that they are both very kind of reflective, uh, shiny types of, you know, versions of this water-based pigment ink, okay? But, okay, so let's take a look at this one. I don't have the reinker for this one, I don't think. But I do have the reinker for these other ones, okay? Now I find that this gold one here is, it's the most kind of, um, I don't know, it's like plasticine or something like that. And if I don't use it um, pretty often, it really dries on me, as do the other um, inks, colors, because one of the things, the characteristic to them is that they are fast drying um, pigment inks that, and with that characteristic, they can dry. I'm looking for a small acrylic block. I'm already kind of getting a little unorganized after organizing my stamp area in January. Okay, but this, yeah, see this right here? I'm ink, trying to ink up this stamp right here, and this is it's pretty dry, okay? I mean, there's, you know, for a stamp pad, so you can see my finger right there going in here like this. It's not, you know, there, there's not a lot of wet ink right there. Okay, so that being said, I find that this one kind of gets sealed off a little bit, you know, do that kind of plasticine type of um, texture. All right, now, normally I don't like to re-ink my pads until I'm kind of getting around to using them. Um, not necessarily with dye-based inks, but with the brilliance for sure, because, like I said, you know, if you don't use them, um, they're going to dry on you. It wouldn't be a bad idea for me to store this in, like, a Ziploc bag or something like that, but, okay, now, if I just lay that down like that, this, even though it's water-based, you know, that amount of moisture in there is not going to be sufficient to put the pad moisture back into solution and for that to absorb right into there. So what I do is I just take an old, this happens to be an old gift card, you know, um, and I'm just 
kind of running this into this like this okay i i might have put in too much but what i do is i'm kind of i'm kind of evening it out and then i'm kind of forcing it down into the pad okay now, i don't want to over force it because right now um the pad is fairly dry so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to just get a good coating of this on here okay just to kind of start putting it back into solution. This one's the most fussy, okay? It's the, you know, it's it's a very thick ink, and it's taken a while for it to go back into solution. I'm talking about the old ink that's already laid down there, okay? And you'll you'll feel it, okay? So you don't want to oversaturate this, otherwise it's just you're just going to end up with a lot of ink on here. So just kind of do that. That's why the edges of this one right here, there's a lot of ink around the edges for me doing this type of motion, okay? So, I don't know, utilize that ink on the side like that. See that right there? How that kind of built up like that? And then just utilize that and squeeze it back in here, okay? So, I don't know if you can tell, but, you know, I'm starting to see... See, I can feel this is, is getting... It's grabbing this card more because the surface moisture isn't the same. And that ink has gone somewhere, so the only place for it to go is below the surface of this, okay? Now, see, I have a little bit of this um, right here. See how it's all kind of thick and built up right there? So you just take this like this, all right? And then take that and put it right back in the top of it, and then kind of squeegee that in. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, I, I might have put a little bit too much, but it, it'll soak down into the, uh, the surface there eventually okay but keep going on like that okay getting there see i mean most of it's off of this and less of it is on the edges here now i go like this on the edges because i'm not going to be utilizing that ink right around the edge it's going to be primarily from this really um be mindful of getting as even a coating as possible too, especially if you're using um, kind of larger stamps with this because, um, you know, with this type of pad and this type of kind of viscosity of ink, you want to really get an even coating. And then when you're inking up your stamps, um, make sure that you, it's really getting thick now. Um, or it's getting dry. Here. I can feel it grabbing this because there's not as much surface um, moisture. Um, yeah, you want to get a nice even coat. Uh, and like I said, don't oversaturate this, okay? I mean, it might even be good. It might not be a practical thing, you know, to ink this up and to allow it to set for, you know, half an hour or something like that. Just to kind of let that kind of mellow out and soak in a little bit more. But... Um, there you have it. It is fairly thick, though, like I said. It won't be like that. I, For me, I find that it won't be like that for too long. I don't know. Maybe if you're in another area and it's super arid, and this is setting up faster, I've found that that can make a difference, okay? All right, let me see something here. Let me just stamp something out with that. I'm curious. I haven't done um, gold on gold in a while. But um, I really like that. Okay, so that's still a little bit thick there on the surface. So let's take some of that and really push it down into that surface right there, okay? I, I inked up too much. I, I shouldn't have put that much ink in there. But uh, maybe it's a good idea so you can see this kind of entire process uh, right here. I know it's not really engaging kind of, uh, you know video to watch here me doing something a hundred times here but okay so let's get that i think i super oversaturated there i've got a little bit of kind of residual ink on here i don't know maybe i'll i'll use this ink for something i'll use a i'll stamp out a scene um later on maybe or you know maybe tomorrow okay so anyway inking up yeah it's really juicy every time you re-ink too okay be careful with your first impressions with this. Um, not if you're doing it in like matte paper, you know, something completely absorbent. But if it's anything slick, 
okay, like a, a glossy cardstock or um, something like this foil. This is the ultimate kind of sealed um, surface to be stamping this on, but go like that. And when I see, but be careful, when you touch down with the stamp to surface, um, you really want to make sure that you don't skew. It's easy to do this and to kind of have it kind of move on you, not as extreme as I just showed, but when you do this, you just want to touch down and then use your adequate pressure. Don't over press into it because um, none of that moisture is going into the surface like that and you'll get a really good print like that, okay? So, I mean, that's, you know, that's as thick as any ink that you'll ever use. Plus, it's metallic, and it's doing, you know, we're going on this completely reflective kind of non-porous surface here. But you can still get really good impressions with it like that. You can emboss that, or you can uh, just allow it to dry, air dry, or you can heat set it very quickly. And, that, and again, that's, I mean, that's just, I mean, that's a, a really powerful trait of these inks right here is that you can air dry in a short amount of time, okay? All right, let me get that back down there like so. Okay, so that Galaxy Gold, I mean, it's it's a different ink, you know, even amongst the Brilliance ones, okay? I haven't re-inked the, re the Starlight Silver. I find the consistency of this one, though, different. It's, like, thinner. I don't know why, okay? Um... But I don't get that kind of plasticine kind of drying action like this one. I think I'm going to put this one in a Ziploc bag just to retain the moisture a little bit longer. Because I don't use that um, color. I don't use the metallics very often. I use the white and the black all the time, though. Okay. All right. So that is that. Let's take a look at the white. Okay. And let's see if we can find... There's a little bit of a different characteristic that you can see on this video here, and then we'll get to the black, which I need to really reorder here pretty soon because um, I'm getting very, very low. Okay, so, okay, here's what I do too. I'm always using my cotton ball on this one. So I'm doing this into it with a, you know, a piece of cotton, and those fibers do transfer down in there. So let me show you what I do with that too, okay? So let's take this card, and let's see if I can get this to show here. Okay, you can kind of see those little fibers on there, right? So let's go like this. See that right there? That's not the pad. That's the cotton there. That's why I have a separate pad for my um, cotton ball kind of applications right there. So I don't know if you see that coming off like that. It's like little furry little... It's, um, so it, some of it's just flaking off and landing on my table down there. But Now this is really dry, otherwise all of that kind of, kind of curls up or uh, kind of balls up into one piece usually if I keep doing this. See like that little hair right there. Um, let's see. See this is all, this is all cotton fiber right there. Right that. Okay, I mean, I that really builds up on me. I don't really t bother taking that off too much. I'm just kind of taking it off right now because, you know, for the sake of this video, and just kind of to dry this off. But this is coming coming to show you. See, there's no white ink kind of built up on this because of how dry it is. Okay, so we're talking really, really quite dry. I need to re-ink these pads. Um, quite often, which was kind of a ink culture shock to me, you know, <laughs> when I first started doing this, um, because I'm used to using dye-based inks and rarely have to re-ink them because they're thin, the pads hold a lot of inks no matter what brand, and you just, you know, it just, I don't know, it wasn't part of my regular routine, so... When I started using the thicker pigment inks, they're thicker in viscosity to begin with, they dry faster, you're using a lot more of them, you know, when you make an impression. I found that sometimes I was re-inking almost with every use. It could be that I was kind of under-inking too, because I like to have my, you know, my various um, dye-based inks 
kind of in that medium range, maybe medium wet, you know, medium dry, not medium dry, but maybe medium wet. Okay. Um, I don't like them fully saturated because when I ink up something, I stamp it out. I don't need that full um, inking of it to leave, you know, a really strong impression. Okay. If anything, if it's over inked, it'll puddle up in, you know, things like, you know, really tight detailed areas within my stamps because I have a lot of condensed dots and uh, I have a high amount of resolution in my designs um, with the amount of dots that I use in condensed areas, okay? All right, now see this right here? I am really using quite a bit of this ink right here. I mean, a lot more than, hopefully you can tell, than that um, gold one. Now I'm adding a little bit more than I normally do because this was really, really um, quite dry. Uh, let's see my credit. This old gift card's getting shredded here with that last usage. Let me see if I have another one. Okay, I don't have another one right there. Uh, right, I have one around here somewhere, but let's just use a, an acrylic block, okay? I mean, anything will work, okay? So, let's just take this. Maybe this is better because you can kind of see. See that right in there? I'm just pulling that across like that, okay? Look at that down there. Maybe I didn't add enough. This is like, okay, see that? There's nothing on there. But look at that right there. I mean, that is a completely different viscosity. Okay, and that's done. See, I mean, see how different that is from the metallic, the gold metallic? I mean, that this is really, it, I mean, it feels dry. I'm kind of wondering if I should add some more. But, you know, you can always add more, but, um, you know... If you over ink it, then you can't really take it out. Now, I'm not going to over ink this one because, you know, I know um, how much I can add into this. And this is, again, it was really quite dry, but see, that's done. And see, there's no over kind of hang up. Like, I do this on the side, just, you know, I mean, there's a tiny bit right there, but, um, you know, that just soaks right in. Okay. So it's just, it's much thin thinner, you know, and than uh, the metallics, so. Okay, so that being said, too, I found that these inks, like the, the gold one right there, it didn't dry as fast for me on certain papers. I think it was the Star Dream uh, gold or something like that, okay? I don't know. I'm, I'm just used to kind of the inks being inks, you know, and a uh, within the same line of inks. But no, the chemistry is different on these. Okay, let's go with the black. You know, the one that I'm using all the time, of course. Let me see if I can show this right here. Okay. See, this is really getting dry. I store this upside down too. Okay. All right, so that is that. Okay, now if I just leave that, that's just going to stay there too. It's so thick that it's just not going to absorb into that um, on its own. Even if I leave it overnight, I don't think. Plus, um, now some of these I have the, that little plastic um, separator for between the pad and the lid. Okay, it's on, you know, like this one right here. It, I would, you know, and I recommend keeping that. I just think it helps to seal off the... Uh, the pad uh, a little bit more than just having it, you know, just going on like that. But I do that with this black one because I didn't keep that other part. But okay, so let's see that right there. And I'm just going like this. And that's done. See, it's all off there. You can't really see it in there either. You can see a little bit of where I've kind of scribbled that on there. Okay. I don't know if that one's thinner. The black is thinner than the white. It might be. I, it's probably about the same in terms of viscosity or the, I don't know, the, the makeup of it. May, I don't know. But that's how I do that. And I, I mean, if, it, if when you're kind of, you know, blending that ink, squishing that down into the surface, if it, you know, you kind of get the idea if it's, if it's completely dry, like mine was on me. I mean, you can keep adding a little bit more or you can just do, you know, just do a, a test print of something that's going to take, you know, two seconds to do and just make a print of it and get the feel of, 
um, the amount of ink that's on there in relation to the surface that you're going to be using it on. If I ink this up, if it's a little bit too juicy, if I'm doing it on matte paper like this, that's going to be absorbing the, um, the moisture when making the impression very quickly, you can go with a little bit of a wet, uh, you know, a wetter surface area on here. But if you're doing it on something like the foils, you know, maybe, you know, or just any kind of non-porous paper like a foil, linen, uh, glossy card stocks, things like that. Those ones are a little bit, you know, glossy cardstock and linen are a little bit more porous, but, um, you know, this is like one kind of end of the spectrum where maybe you have it a little bit more medium in terms of um, how much ink you have in there. And plus, it's about, it's about usage too. If you're going to be using the ink quite a bit um, on a couple of projects that you, you're going to do, if you're going to do one scene maybe, and not use it for a while, then leave your reinker um, in the bottle because you know it's going to stay moister in here than putting it in the pad where it's going to um, be subject to evaporation uh, a little bit more uh, than in the bottle, which is none. You know, you keep it in the bottle for probably years, and it's not going to uh, dry out on you. But it will dry out on the pads, um, and especially if you're in certain areas that are a lot more arid. So, um, yeah, uh, I should probably, like I said, keep these, um, the ones that I'm, the colors that I'm not using in like a little Ziploc bag. I have this like copper run here that I haven't used very much in the Platinum Planet. I haven't been doing a lot of um, foil pieces that I really like using this one. This one might be interesting for the uh, use that I've been doing with the Starlight Silver lately. This one that's super reflective and kind of like chrome brushed aluminum like. I really love that one. It's so bright, but this Platinum Planet here is interesting too. I don't have reinkers for these ones because I haven't used them a lot, but um, I don't know. I should uh, get back to that, but yeah, see that right there? Um, yeah, okay. That, this, it feels a little bit dry, but no, it looks pretty good still. I've only used that one I don't know, two or three times. I think I was using it in conjunction with the Starlight Silver. But, I don't know, so there's some pretty dynamic colors with this. So anyways, um, like I said in previous videos, if you feel inclined to get some of these, take a look online. Um, there are places that have, uh, have it uh, available online. If you can't find it from those places, you can get it from the distributor at uh, Imagine Crafts. Um, they are the distributor for Sukaneko pro products, all of them, in the United States. You know, so they wholesale, and that's where places um, get theirs from, and it's a good idea to support them. But um, if you can't find it, uh, Imagine Crafts is the, uh, the place. Um, you know, another um, uh, source um, for this type of thing. So anyways, uh, yeah, re-inking of the pads... Be mindful about how much ink you uh, add to them and use some sort of, um, you know, just, you know, any, any stiff type of um, uh, surface um, that you can really kind of, um, kind of uh, even the ink out on the surface, but also kind of press it into the surface if need be with certain colors, okay? And uh, they should work pretty good for you. Like I said, this one was really old and it was completely dried out because I just never used it before until I started experimenting with these um, a little over a year ago. Maybe it's a year and a half or something like that. But I use them all the time. And uh, I don't know, I just hope, you know, that they don't discontinue them because a lot of people just have forgotten about them. They haven't really forgotten. Well, some people, the people that had them forgot about them, okay? Because uh, they're like, they were released like 20 years ago. And people that have just started stamping, let's say from 15 years ago and up or something like that, or 10, they never even heard of them. You know, because the, there's new lines and new types of products that have come out since then. And those are the types of um, products that get a lot of advertising and whatnot. And, you know, kind of, um, you know, notoriety in terms of um, people using those products on you know, online and 
I don't know, so you know, um, social media and stuff like that. But these can be seen as a foundational type of thing in terms of um, a different type of uh, product that does certain things that no other things can do. There's a lot of other kind of brands of um, you know your other types of pigmentings. This is you know Versafine Clair is by the same company. It's Sukin Echo, but a lot of people still know about this, of course. Um, they know about things like Stays On, also by Sukineko. Colorbox were the, you know, kind of, I don't know if it was the industry standard, but it seemed like those ones were the most popular of all pigmentings out there. Hero Ar uh, Hues, Hero Arts by Hero Arts. That's become, you know, a very well-known um, pigmenting line. So, um, all great. Um, different chemistry to these ones. Then these ones right here, these ones are kind of designed to dry um, by air or by heat setting and being possible to dry on those other types of surfaces that these inks never will dry. Um, they'll never dry, but you can emboss them though on surfaces like this. But if you just want just the straight um, ink on these other types of surfaces. I mean, it, it's numerous. There's a lot of surfaces that we just never would stamp on, but we can now um, because of the characteristic that these ones are, you know, completely designed for to begin with. Okay, so anyways, hope that comes in handy. And uh, yeah, you know, look to brilliance for kind of opening up some potential doors. It's not just to new products that you don't have, but it's probably to... Um, a lot of services that you already have in your um, supplies. So and they're really fun to use. And uh, I don't know. It's just uh, get them while you... Okay, and that being said, if there's some colors that you think you'll be using quite a bit, don't forget the re-inkers for them um, because you'll be going through a lot of it if you really like the uh, the techniques that they afford you. Okay, so anyways, thanks again for watching.